Hey folks, welcome to Board Game Casual. In a recent video, I mentioned how I was so excited to get a copy of Heat Pedal to the Metal, it cut the line in front of some of the other games on the shelf of shame that I set out to play this year. In today's video, I thought I'd share more of my initial thoughts playing the game for the first time. Heat Pedal to the Metal is a car racing themed board game that came out in 2022 and took the board game world by storm. Heat seemed to be in everyone's top 10 list that year. It had a ton of hype and for a long while was a real hot commodity. It was very hard to get a copy. Every time they do a new print run, it would sell out immediately. And this was happening run after run. I kind of assumed that since this game was so popular and was being published by Days of Wonder, the same publisher of the widely known Ticket to Ride franchise, that it would only be a matter of time before Heat would be in big box stores everywhere and at a reasonable price point for mass market appeal, just like you see with Ticket to Ride. In fact, it seems to be the opposite. They seem to be using the high demand as a way to justify higher and higher price points. When Heat first came out, it had a retail of $49.99. A couple of print runs later and the MSRP was raised to $59.99. Most recently, I've seen an MSRP of $74.99 if nothing more than to make $59.99 look like a sale price. As much as I really wanted to try this game out, I was content to wait for the hype to die down and hopefully scoop up the game on sale for an actual discount at some point. I was fortunate enough not to have to worry about that though, as I was gifted a copy along with the Heavy Rain expansion from my good buddy Andrew. Thanks again, Andrew. Now, just to be clear, I've only played the game twice so far with three players using the first race and the basic setup. I haven't had a chance to delve into the advanced cards and conditions, much less the Heavy Rain expansion. So keep that in mind with these first impressions. My initial thoughts can be summed up into two key points. This game is an amazing car racing simulator. But also, you have to settle into the right mindset when playing this game, at least for me. So first of all, this game blows me away with how thematic the game and the mechanics feel. It really feels like the technical aspects of a racing sim. You know the first time you're playing a new racing video game and you don't have a feel for the controls yet, so you're kind of wobbly and you're going into turns way too fast and crashing into the wall, or maybe you're coming into the turns way too slow and all the other cars are passing you by? You get the same feeling from this board game. It's really clever how everything comes together in such a logical and intuitive way. The way upshifting into a higher gear allows you to play more cards and increase your speed. And downshifting into a lower gear means playing less cards and therefore reducing your speed. How you want to maximize your speed on the straightaways, but you need to be careful about coming into a turn too fast or you could spin out. You want to slow down just enough to be safe but keeping as much momentum as possible, allowing you to blast out of the corner, or how you have to make critical decisions on when to push your car to the limits at the expense of more heat cards. In real life, if you keep your foot down on maximum throttle, your engine's gonna heat up. And if you're constantly hard on your brakes, your brakes are gonna heat up and both will become less effective. In the game, as you take more heat cards, those cards start to clog up your deck, making it harder to speed up and slow down. It's a really smart system. I love the drafting in this game, drafting behind another car that allows you to kind of slingshot ahead. It's a key part of the strategy and makes for a really exciting turn when you can pull it off. And while the game does have some catch-up mechanics built in, it's not like someone who's driving really poorly can expect to win by pure luck. Don't ask me how I know. The race feels tense and you will be rewarded for driving well. As great as that is, stepping back and thinking about my first play experience as a whole, admittedly out of the gate, I thought it felt a little dry. I typically play games that at their core are about growth and progression, where the experience is all about leveling up or building up. You're acquiring new resources and figuring out how to get more resources faster. You're acquiring new weapons and powers and getting stronger. You're adding bonuses to your deck or building your tableau or your engine. These are games that have multiple paths to victory, and a big part of the fun is choosing a strategy that you think will help you win. Heat, on the other hand, is a different kind of game. 
game. By comparison, it feels static and finite. Now, of course, this is a game about racing. Cars are flying around the track, turns are quick. There's a lot of excitement and simultaneous play. That's not what I'm referring to. What I mean is that this is not the type of game where you level up throughout the game. I feel the same at the beginning of the game as I do at the end. I've just either won or lost. Those cards that you're given at the beginning of the game don't change. From your first turn to your last turn, that's the deck you're cycling through. You don't pick up tuning bonuses or power-ups along the way. And the deck you have itself isn't that big. You know how many of each card you have total, and therefore always have a rough idea of what you have left to draw before reshuffling. And it's very much an even playing field with the other players, as they all have the same cards you do. Again, in the basic setup. To use a term I hear a lot of other board gamers use, heat is much more of a puzzle, where you're striving to maximize that balance between managing which gear to be in and how many cards you're going to play, which cards to use when, and when to push a little harder, even at the expense of heat. Heat is not a game where you play by fate and gut feel. This is a game of precision. The spaces on the board are numbered for a reason, so that you always know exactly how far away you are from a curve at any given time and can plan accordingly. You're not drawing mystery cards from a huge random deck of chance, hoping that you'll get lucky and discover something new that'll get you out in front. You should know that the highest card you can pull from your deck is a five and the lowest is a zero. And you should always have a rough idea of whether you've already played all of your high cards or all of your low cards into your disc card pile. In general, the push your luck element in this game is pretty contained. In most cases, you're choosing what gear to shift into based on the cards that are already visible in your hand. So for me personally, I had to reset my brain and expectations going into the next game, recognizing the game for what it is and what it isn't. And it sounds like this is actually a pretty common occurrence with Heat, as I've heard in other reviews. Board Game Hot Takes, for example, were pretty lukewarm on Heat in their initial review. They didn't really get the hype. Then, months later, came back and said they were wrong, and how, after playing the game more, it's become one of their favorites. So I'm really excited to try the game with some of the advanced cards and maps, and I can't wait to try it with more players. Production. In terms of production quality, the game looks and feels great. I love the artwork in this game. It's a fantastic depiction of the golden age of racing. I like that it has full-size cards since holding and drawing cards is the bulk of what you'll be doing. The player boards are great and have a very helpful order of operations along the top. Although my friends did have to keep re-asking what some of the iconography meant. And it's very cool that it comes with multiple game board tracks and modules right in the box. The cars are multicolored, which is cool, but a little small and get a little fiddly to pick up and move. However, the tracks are already pretty big, so I don't know how you'd make the cars any bigger and still fit on the board. And for those curious like me, no, the wheels don't spin, which is a good thing so that they stay in place and don't accidentally roll into another space. I think if I had one wish, it would be for the cars to at least be heavier. If they were made of metal like the car in Monopoly, it would be a lot harder for them to move out of position when accidentally bumped. If anyone out there has upgraded their cars to something you like better, let me know down in the comments. Gameplay and complexity. In terms of complexity, I think this game is pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to learn, and after the fact, my friends actually said, this game is actually a lot simpler than the instructions made it seem. So while the rulebook is very detailed, I think in person you could teach it even faster. There's a lot of simultaneous action which keeps the game pretty snappy. There's not a lot of downtime, and the game certainly doesn't overstay its welcome. In fact, in both of our two lap games, I was jonesing for a few more laps. It takes me a lap or two to find my rhythm. And while other races have more laps, you could easily set the race for as many laps as you want, and the game would play fine. So there you have it, my first impressions of Heat, pedal to the metal. Overall, I think it's a pretty good game. I really appreciate the design, and I can't wait to dig into more of the advanced stuff and with a larger player count to see if that amplifies the fun. If you're into cars and racing at all, I highly recommend checking it out. Similarly, if you're looking for a good, light to medium weight competitive game in general, I think this is a pretty good one to have on your shelf that you can coax non-board gamers into playing. And finally, if you're like me, just be prepared to go into heat with the right mindset. This game isn't about, how do I get stronger? What am I gonna get to build? What path am I gonna take? 
This game is much more about focusing in on what you have and trying to be more efficient than your opponents. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Heat down in the comments. Did anyone else find it took them a few games to warm up to it? Are you annoyed by the MSRP trickery? Do you have any good go-to component upgrades? What do you think of the Heavy Rain expansion? Let me know. Thanks so much for watching. It means a lot to me and the channel if you like this video and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one here on Board Game Casual.